Hello Ice and Fire Nerds, this is Chris and welcome back to another Game of Thrones Season 7 filming news video. First off, let me apologize, I've been under the weather so this is a few days late. But we do have a beloved character we have not seen since Season 1, possibly returning in Season 7. Dracarys. Alright guys, so let's jump right in, but first let me thank Geekfuel for sponsoring today's video, and for those that are interested, stick around to the end of this video, and I'll be unboxing February Geek Fuel box to see what we get. Alright, so let's get right to it. So we have Watchers on the Wall who broke a story a couple days ago, and I'll put a link to the article in the description below, and the story was that Maisie Williams has been spotted in Canada actually filming. Now, the majority of Season 7 has basically wrapped up, but they probably go back and do some reshoots and things like that. And in this article, Watchers on the Wall did actually put this tweet up here where somebody was thanking Maisie Williams for you know shooting in Canada, for helping the Canadian economy, etc. But what's really interesting here is at the same time, Instinct Wolves posted to their Instagram account now, if you don't know, Instinct Wolves is the company that provides these animals for filming and stuff like that. And the first one here, his name is Quigley, and this is the wolf that's been playing Ghost for the past six seasons. And the post simply says, ready to go to work, as in ready to film something. But what's really interesting here is the next picture they posted was a wolf we have not seen before, and it says ready to work, just like the previous post, but they also put the hashtag winter is coming. So of course in the show we know that only two dire wolves remain, Summer was killed, Lady was killed, as well as Shaggy Dog. The only ones that remain that we know of is Ghost, and of course Nymeria, and we have not seen Nymeria since Season 1, Episode 2, The King's Road, when Arya ran her off because she bit Joffrey. And ever since then we've all been wondering, are we going to see Nymeria again? Now of course in the books it's a little bit different, the same thing has basically happened, but there's always these references when Arya is over in Braavos to her wanting to go back to her wolf pack, her yearning for her wolf pack so to speak, and of course people in Westeros have seen this giant wolf pack running around the Riverlands, and of course in the show at the end of last year we saw that Arya was back at the Riverlands when she killed Walter Frey, so of course this makes perfect sense for her to be reunited with Nymeria in the Riverlands. This video is not necessarily just to say, okay Nymeria is back, but what's the point of Nymeria being back? So in the books, of course, Arya is a warg. She wargs cats over in Braavos as she's training to become a faceless man. All the Stark kids are wargs. Rob is a warg. Jon, of course, is a warg in the books as well. He just resists the power. And as a matter of fact, when Jon is killed in the books, his last word is ghost, not Ali. And that leads a lot of people to believe that he is going to warg into ghosts when he dies. That way he is protected while his body gets resurrected or you know healed or whatever it may be, however it happens in the books. So I do not believe this is a coincidence that Maisie Williams was in Canada filming at the same time that this company Instinct Wolves posted this stuff to their Instagram account with only two wolves and the only two remaining in the show. Now of course Nymeria is going to look a lot different than the last time we saw her. She was still relatively small as far as a puppy goes, but this wolf here that was posted on the Instagram account does look like a Nymeria that would be grown, so this makes complete sense, so I think they will be reunited in Season 7. What's the point of having Nymeria back? Is it just to have her run around with Arya? Some people believe that Arya may actually die in the books at some point and actually live a second life in Nymeria, and I think that's certainly a possibility, but in the show, the only Stark kid that was actually a ward was Bran, and I don't see them introducing that even in Season 7 or Season 8 as Arya was a ward this whole entire time and we just never knew it so I don't think that's the way it's going to go down the show at least but I do think that Nymeria does serve a point and I have made a point similar to this in a few other videos as far as Arya's storyline very similar to if Arya runs into somebody like the Hound again now of course we know the Hound was on this arc where he was all about violence he wanted to kill his brother he's wanted revenge on his brother ever since he was a kid and got his face burnt off because he was playing with his toy knight and I think Arya had a very similar thing with her list now of course in the show she only has a couple people left on her list and that would be Cersei basically and Melisandre and I think it's possible that you know Arya actually kills Melisandre in season seven. But what I'm saying here, and as I said in previous videos, that I think something has to take Arya off this revenge path and get her refocused on her family and the true wars to come as far as the White Walkers and the War for the Dawn. So I think that a reunion with Nymeria would actually serve that purpose to remind her of who she is. You know, maybe the Hound talks some sense into her. Maybe he says, "Look, you got to quit worrying about killing all these damn people. Since you've been gone, I was saved." I hung out with this one group who taught me what was really important. Now I've met up with a brotherhood without banners, and we're going north to fight the real war, and there's a lot more going on here than just your damn revenge plot, so you know, get your shit together. So I do think that's a possibility, but I do think now Myria could also serve that purpose as a plot device just to get her back on the right track as far as getting off the revenge spree and kind of refocusing on her family, being a Stark, 
and actually helping John to face the wars to come as far as the White Walkers. Because otherwise, there's really no purpose here for Nymeria to even return. You know, they could just simply write it off in the show. They really don't have to address it at all. She simply disappears since she ran her off in season one, never to be heard from again. But again, in the books, this is a recurring theme. A lot of people have seen this giant wolf pack led by a giant wolf. Obviously, that's Nymeria in the Riverlands, and obviously that's where Arya is right now. So it makes perfect sense for her to be reunited and that helps her to kind of focus on who she is, what's really important. And of course, we did hear her say in the end of season six, a girl is Arya Stark of Winterfell and I'm going home. So she knows she wants to go home, but of course, when she got home at the end of season six, we saw her continue with her kill list, killing Walter Frey, which I think was a badass move. But the point is, I guess, that she's so focused on her list, she really doesn't know what the hell's going on as far as the wars to come and the real threat coming down from the north. So anyway guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think we're going to see Nymeria again in season seven? I think we will. I'm damn excited about it because I love me some damn dire wolves. I mean, hell, Riddick was even excited about this news when I told him. I mean, he had a huge crush on Lady and Nymeria, so I certainly hope it's gonna happen at least for his sake because he would love to see Nymeria again. All right guys, so let me know what you think in the comments below and for you guys who stuck around, let's get to this February Geek Fuel box and see what we have. All right, so let's jump into this Geek Fuel box. This is the month of February and I've only broken the seal here, if you can see that. So I have not opened this yet. So let's see what we have for the month of February. I'm not even sure of the theme. I didn't even get a hold of the theme this month, as I usually don't actually, because I like to be surprised, you know? I never thought I would like a subscription service until I started getting Geek Fuel, but I really enjoy the surprise of the damn thing. So anyway, let's see what we got here. Let's jump right in. And first, as usual, we have Geek Fuel Magazine. And it looks like the theme here is the Nintendo Switch and Zelda. So that's a cool thing. We have the Nintendo Switch, of course. The Legend of Zelda is one of my favorite games of all time. I still play Legend of Zelda and Super Mario Brothers on an old emulator, for that matter, every once in a while. So Geek Fuel Magazine with Zelda and Nintendo Switch. So I'll take a look at that later. And of course, there's always some cool stuff in here if you like to buy geeky stuff. So uh, Geek Fuel Magazine, as usual. And uh, I'll save this t-shirt for last, so I'll just dig around it here. And let's see, uh, Property of Bruce, I'm not sure, it's covering some kind of poster it looks like. So we have a poster here, some kind of uh, thing here, let's see what we got here. Alright, so what we have here is a limited edition print apparently, and we have a certificate of authenticity with it. So we have a baby Batman here, it looks to be like he's got some little building blocks, it says Wham over here and Pow over there. And this looks to be a limited print actually, because we have a certificate of authenticity. Geek Fuel has issued the certificate to authenticate this limited edition print of Hero in Training. So we have a certificate of authenticity of this limited edition print. So that's pretty cool if you're a DC fan. All right, so next we have our monthly game here, and this is downloadable from Steam. It looks to be Archibald's Adventures. So you can see that now. Now they're sending cards out. They usually just send a little card with a code on it, and it's all downloadable from Steam. So this is free for Geek Fuel users. And we have a card here now, a Steam card. From Geek Fuel with the little code on the back. So Archibald Adventures. I'm not sure if I'll dig that game, but some people may. But you do have a monthly game from Steam. So there's that. Dig down to the bottom here. Next we have this month's pin here. If you're a pin collector, this this is something I don't collect, but a lot of people do collect pins. We have a Stranger Things edition collectible pin. And uh, every month I've been getting these from Geek Fuel. And uh, we had uh, R2D2, for example, but uh, one month. But it's the Geek Fuel logo kind of robot with uh, different ones, and this was turned upside down, but this is the guy, a uh, little toothless bastard from Stranger Things, I forgot his name, but anyway, a little collectible pin here, Stranger Things edition. All right, and next we have, let's see, we have a prize ticket of some sort, Nuke World Amusements prize ticket. All right, and it's got a little code on it, if you can see, there's a code on there, and I'm just kind of covering that up, but uh, it looks like uh, Nuke World, so you go to geekfuel.com slash nukeaworld, and enter this ticket number and I guess there's a chance to win something. So that's pretty cool. So uh, I'll definitely check that out later and enter that and see what I get. But yeah, a prize ticket to enter on the website and see if we can win something else. That's pretty cool. And next we have, this looks to be this month's exclusive item. Every month there's an exclusive item, you know, following a theme usually from Geek Fuel. And this is definitely Zelda based. So we got from the uh, Geek Fuel magazine, of course, we have the Nintendo Switch and Zelda. This is definitely Zelda. You see the power of the sword portable charger. So it looks like a piece of electronics. So what we have here is, oh, cool. So we have the original Zelda sword in 8-bit, an 8-bit sword. Let me see that there. 
So this actually is a phone charger. So you charge this up and take it with you and you can charge your phone anywhere and it's a little Zelda 8-bit sword. How cute. So that's pretty damn cool. And then there's some cords in there, of course, to charge this before you go out and, uh, and charge your phone. So the exclusive item, a Zelda phone charger. That's pretty damn cool. And last but not least, we have the t-shirt of this month and it is... All right, and it is a Nuka World Amusements t-shirt. So you can see that there, Nuka World Amusements. And then on the back, you have the logo there. So Nuka World Amusements. So it looks like the theme was this and Zelda this month for sure. So there is a red t-shirt and I've gotten different colors every month. So that's cool because all I buy is fucking black. So uh, that certainly helps me out. And as usual, you get the uh, little card in here that kind of tells you everything you got as far as the t-shirt, what it looks like, men, women. Uh, and then as well as all the other stuff you got in your box and explains what everything is in case you're not familiar with everything because this is a lot of different nerd stuff in one spot. It's not just all Star Wars or all Game of Thrones or all DC or Marvel at one time. So anyway, pretty cool box. Uh, and again, if you're interested in Geek Fuel, check out the link in the description below. Uh, again, geekfuel.com slash smokescreen and you can get one for yourself. And again, for my particular channel, they agreed to give out a Game of Thrones exclusive item in your very first box, no matter what the theme is, or no matter what the month is. So be sure to check out Geek Fuel, show them some love. And also guys, let me know what you think in the comments below about Nymeria coming back in season seven, and Arya and their reunion. And what does that actually mean? Is that going to mean just a reunion for the sake of being a reunion? Or is it going to be there for a bigger plot point as far as the end game perhaps? And again, a lot of people think that it could mean that Arya actually dies and lives a second life in Nymeria. Although I don't think they'll go that route in the show because they have not introduced Arya as a warg. And they should have done that a long time ago if they're going to do it at all. So anyway guys, that'll do it for today's video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as usual, thank you for all the support, especially to you guys on Patreon. And a special shout out to my Patreon executive smokescreen producers, Hall Griffin, Lala Gig, Vol Guy 10, Kisa Powell, Marilyn Bentley, Mark Joseph, aka The Snow and Winterfell, Joanna, and Sean Hayes. Thank you very much. I really, really appreciate the support. And thanks to all you guys out there in YouTube land. I really appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe to get everything and be sure to click that notification bell so you're notified when I drop a new video. So thanks again, guys. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.